guys, it's Faces Sims, and we are back with more Love Spell, and hopefully this is going to record. Woo! I think the first part actually saved this time. Oh, good lord. It's like a train wreck and a half my life lately. Um, So we decided we were going to go down Enix's route first, because it's the only route I didn't get to finish before I lost everything, so... Um, like the last half of it at least will be a surprise. I've read through episode one and two, and I think three and four. I don't remember if I was on five or seven, so we'll know when we get there. I'll be like, oh, I haven't read this yet. Cool. So, but the first couple of parts I've read. So anyway, Homecoming episode one. As my, vi as my vision begins to return to me, I look around to find myself in a foreign bed in an unfamiliar room. Uh, what a weird dream. <gasps> the moon can wear that. Hold on, there we go. I suddenly grip my head as a throbbing headache hits me full swing. Okay, so you only got... Did I mention this? That I'm gonna... I put the hat on little things around in the backgrounds? I don't know if I did. Because I know I've said it before, but I don't know if that part stayed recorded. And the first part, we didn't get to see the hat. I always lose my hat. And I get disappointed because it'll my mouse will slide off my screen or something, and then I lose my little hat. But when I have it, I like to put it on things. It's very entertaining. Anyway. I suddenly grip my head as a throbbing headache hits me full swing. It looks fucking cute on the moon. Vague memories slowly begin to resurface in my mind. That's right. I was drinking at the bar, but then... I can't remember anything. It's all fuzzy from there. Wait a minute. Where am I? Oh my god. D don't tell me. Did I actually go home with someone? Whose room is this? As panic begins settling into the pit of my stomach, terrible scenarios flood my thoughts. What did I do? Who did I do? Suddenly, the lights flicker on and a familiar voice draws my attention. And you're finally up, huh? I whip my head around to see my childhood friend, Enix, standing by the doorframe, carrying some laundry. E e Enix? Is this your room? What, what am I... Oh, oh, my head is killing me. I grip my head again as the throbbing pain worsens from my sudden movements. I like the music. The music's so good. Is that a fucking Uncle Sam poster? It's not... Uncle Sam can wear- that's not, that's not what it looks like. Uncle Sam wants you. I don't know if that's what it- And there's- Is that an owl in his picture? Oh, it's a vase. It's just still life. In this- This- His boombox looks like an alien, so now it's an alien boombox wearing a hat. From the corner of my eye, I watch as Enix quickly rushes over to me and places a comforting hand on my shoulder. Hey, take it easy. You were totally wasted when I came to get you earlier. And you must still be feeling pretty terrible right now. He can wear that, too. Cute on him. C came to get me? What are you talking about? What happened? <laughs> His angry face. Oh, how convenient for you to not remember what you did to the inside of my poor bathroom. Er, he, he looks pissed. Just what the heck did I do? After being subjected to Enix's intense glare for a few moments, I can't help but sheepishly look down... I hear him mutter a sigh as he shakes his head. It looks the best on the moon. I got a call from your number earlier tonight, but imagine my surprise when it turns out to be the pub's bartender telling me you're completely drunk and unable to even stand on your own. So I came to get you, but then... The bartender... Wait, I think I remember something. I childishly throw my hands around in an exaggerated manner as I vent out to the pub's bartender. Oh, pitcher's wearing it now. I've been in love with him for so long, but how can he just go and break my heart like that and still have the nerve to come back here? Huh? Men are the worst. Not wrong. Oh my, you must really like him, huh? So what's his name? His name is Enix, and it's such a stupidly perfect name. Like, him. He's perfect and stupid. Stupidly perfect. Like, perfect. Ugh, no! 
I can't think about him anymore. Give me another shot, bartender. Sorry, I can't give you any more drinks like this, but... Enix, huh? Little fucking matchmaker. Don't worry, I think I can help you out. You said he's back in town, right? Do you have his number? His number? Well, yeah, of course I do. Perfect. <laughs> Just give me your phone and don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of the rest. His name is Aslan, by the way, and we love him. Even though we don't get to see him much, but it's still fine. My jaw drops as I piece together the bartender's words and corresponding actions. I'll sue him! I'll totally sue that meddling bartender! And so, I just brought you back here because... Wait, hey! Have you even been listening to me this whole time? He's so angry at us. What? Oh, I, I mean, y yeah, totally! I, uh... Spacey. Enix's voice suddenly grows soft as he sits down on the bed beside me. I can feel my cheeks growing warm as his blue eyes draw closer to my own, searching my face for an answer. Do you know how worried I was to have the first call from you in ages turn out to be you in trouble? Listen, I know I've been away for a while, but I'd like to think I know you pretty well. You can always talk to me about anything. You do know that, right? My heart stammers as Enix suddenly brings up a hand to feel my forehead. His brow furrows worriedly. Your face is flushed red like before. Do you need me to bring you anything? R water, please? Got it. Stay put. I'll be right back. When Enix leaves the room, emotions tug at my heart and I heave a breath of relief. I l as I look around the room, I abruptly catch my appearance in a nearby mirror and cringe. <sighs> How can I let this happen? He's the last person I ever wanted to see me like this. Reaching over to look for my phone, I realize there's still a few moving boxes sprawled around the floor. He's barely gotten back home and I'm already causing him trouble. I finally spot my phone on a nearby table. As I slowly get out of bed, I spy a half-open box full of familiar toy monster figurines next to me. My eyes widen as a huge wave of nostalgia hits me from seeing the toys, and I can't help but smile as I pick one up. Oh, I remember this little guy! We'd play with all the- we'd, uh, we'd play with these all the time. Can't believe he still has them. Oh wow, look at this one! What a trip down memory lane. <laughs> I wonder what other ones he's kept. A little peek won't hurt, right? Is this a new hobby of yours? Going around puking in people's new bathrooms and then invading their privacy? No need to be rude, bitch. Jeez. Caught. No, I was looking for my phone and then I spotted the box open and saw this little guy. Enix, these are so old. I'm surprised you still have them. Do you remember when we got these together? How could I forget? The toy store only had one Miss Moon figure left and you wanted her so bad for me that you traded me your entire uh, Netromon collection for it. <laughs> Still a pretty good deal to this day, I gotta admit. I can't help but smile warmly as I hold the small toy monster. A gentle feeling of warmth washes over me thinking back on all of my childhood memories with Enix. The hours we'd spend thinking up names and stories for each little monster. The adventures we took them on together. I didn't, uh, I didn't know it at the time, but those would end up being some of the happiest days of my life. But nothing can last forever. Oh, the sad music. As I reach out to open the box and put the toy back, a framed photo of Isla and Enix smiling together peeks out, and it brings me back to cold reality. What am I doing? I shouldn't even be here. Things aren't the same as back then. Not even close. Just as I quickly stand up, a wave of sudden dizziness overpowers me. The moon can't wear it over there now. I begin to sway slightly before I feel something firm steady me. I breathe in a familiar scent as I slowly look up to peer into Enix's worried face. My face flushes different shades of red when I realize we're much closer than I anticipated. Well, they're... I love when they do the glitter thing. So this is like new for you, but I've seen it a million times, but I love it when it does this like... Glittery thing around. <laughs> so great. Well, they're 
And don't stand up so fast, dummy. You're still really hungover. Are you trying to get yourself hurt? Enix, I... I should go. Now. Are you crazy? You can barely stand. And the only place you're going is back into that bed. You need to rest. Stop being my mom. I, I shouldn't be here. What if Isla misunderstands? Oh. I feel goosebumps emerge on my skin as I feel him gently set me down on the bed. I expect him to step back, but he kneels down in front of me and looks up at my face instead. Isla's not here. I drove her to the airport just before your call came in. She's on a trip abroad with her family for a few weeks and won't be back for a while. And what is there to misunderstand? I can't help out my best friend after not seeing her for the last few years. Yeah, girls don't really... It's kind of weird with the, like, your best friend is a female who's also in love with you. And you... You know what I mean? Like, that can be fine, but it's a little awkward when your best friend is in love with you. I guess I would kind of pretend whether it's male or female. Like, you're dating someone and their best friend is in love with them, whether that person is the same gender or the opposite. It be like, it's a little concerning. You might not have any feelings for them, but they are in love with you. And like, sometimes people in love do stupid things. Like, write your name into a book uh, in a magic spell to make you fall in love with me. I'm just saying. We're like, nah, I mean... Look, Isla's a bitch. And they made her that way so we don't feel guilty about the fact that we like snatching her man. Like, I mean, she snatched first. We just snatched him back. We're like, I mean, we loved him first. He was my man. And then she took him from us. And like, we never got a chance to love him. But like, bitch knows we're in love with him. So like, if she was nice, we'd feel like shit about it. But best friend, huh? I I haven't heard you say that in a long time. Well, it hasn't changed. Not to me. You are my best friend. I know time has passed and we aren't as close as we once were, but... I hope you haven't forgotten that. Forgotten? Of course I haven't forgotten. How could you say that? And then stop putting up a fight and stay a little longer, alright? I don't feel comfortable letting you be alone when you're in this shape. Please, Spacey, let me help you. I nod slowly as I look down, unable to get out uh, unable to get out another word. My heart feels heavy, but happy. I miss my best friend. An hour or so later. Oop. I told you I'm gonna put this hat on all sorts of shit. As I left Enix's apartment with my belongings, I blink in surprise at the familiar corridor. You moved out of your folks' place, right? Where's your apartment? I'll drive you there. C closer than you might think? My mouth gapes in disbelief as I repeatedly look over at, apartment at the apartment number next door to Enix's. Considering it must be the effect of the lingering alcohol in my system, I rub my eyes and look again. Sure enough, it stays the same. Enix peers over to where I'm staring and raises an eyebrow. What is it? You know someone who lives there or something? live there. This is my apartment. Wait, seriously? See, since this is the first route we're playing, you don't recognize the hallway. Although, theoretically, they could reuse the hallway as any hall. You know what I mean? Because it'd kind of be weird to be like, well, this is Enix's apartment hallway, and this is our apartment hallway. That's a lot of hallway backgrounds, right? But, when it's like the familiar background, when I first played this route and did this, I, this is like the familiar hallway, and I was like, ah, this is our hallway. Because <laughs> I've seen it before in other routes, but... You knew where I was going. I figured we'd live down the hall, though. But when it was, like, next door, I'm like, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I heard someone moved in next door late last week, but I had no idea who. It was you! This is... This is unreal. Wow, I guess old habits really do die hard, huh? <laughs> We're just destined to be lifelong neighbors, you and I. Hold on. And that means... Look at his face! Look at his face, it's great. Spacey, don't tell me you are the kook next door I keep hearing belt out anime openings in the shower every morning. You know what? Alright, I have to say, because I was reminded of this part, 
after my whole deal with my hard drive and everything like that, look, it's just, it's going to be forever. It's going to be in my mind. It's, it's still a painful memory. Okay. It's still too real. Um, so like the next day after it happened, I was like, okay, I'm still just <laughs> coming in here with it. And I did my, I'm like, you know what? I need to take a shower. It was like lunchtime at work. Cause I didn't get a chance to take a shower in the morning. Um, so I was like, I'm going to go take a shower. And normally I just get in the shower. Okay. Whatever. I'm like, no, I'm blasting music. And of course, a lot of my music is my anime theme songs because it's like Black Butler theme songs. Fuck yeah. Well, um, Bungo Stray Dogs theme songs. Fuck yeah. I have the, mm. and those were playing and I, one of them came on and I was like, oh, and, it, and I was like in the shower. I'm, having, I'm like, oh, this is good. Hot water, really good smelling body wash and like music and it's anime. Oh. Or, like, the one song that I can actually sing in Japanese, okay? Like, like, I actually know the words, too. And I don't just, like, mumble along, like, I kind of know how it's going, and I just blah, 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 mumble words that I don't understand, right? When I actually know the legit words. And I was, like, laughing at myself because it reminded me of this, and I was like, ah! <laughs> and then I felt bad again because the whole thing got lost. <laughs> it's like a psych. But it was funny because I pulled a spacey in this game and I totally wasn't thinking about it at the time until it happened I was like ah that's funny <laughs> but I wasn't really singing loud because I'm terrified of people hearing me sing because I sing terribly I sound terrible just my voice you think I can sing full fucking shit right so I was just singing to myself but not like belting it out but it did remind me of this which I thought was funny it gave me a good chuckle and I thought I would share it I knew I'm like when we re-record I'll have to share that moment so, this game just reflected on my life. I pulled a, I pulled a love spell in my real life, so it's beautiful. Not that writing someone's name in a love spell make them fall in love with me, but like singing anime theme songs in the shower. Anyway, hopefully my neighbors didn't hear me, but okay. Anyway, I just love the snarky look on his face. So he's like, <laughs> what? You, you, you hear that? Just how thin are these stupid overpriced walls? <laughs> Man, I was totally wondering who was watching my villain academia. I like that. Next door. This is priceless. Instead of my hero academia, it's my <laughs> I love it. It's cute. Enix's laughter only grows louder at my dumbfound expression. A few moments later, he regains his composure and walks closer to me. My heart begins to race as he raises his hand to my forehead again. Your complexion is looking a lot better, but it's still in the middle of the night. If you start feeling bad again or need anything, let me know. I'm a knock away now. Literally, he's so precious. You are so handsome. I yes, right, yeah. Oh, oh, look at the time. I gotta go. B bye, Enix. Good night. <laughs> night, you goof. You're just calling us dummy and goof. It's to push off how much you're in love with me. I breathe heavily as I quickly close the door to my apartment. By the way, we have a nice, swanky-ass motherfucking apartment. This thing is la fucking jit. Look at how beautiful this is. Like, there's this nice raised area over here. It's just like a sitting area by these freaking, like, sliding glass doors. Probably a nice patio out there or something. We got stairs going up. I mean, like, logistically, there's no fucking way we can afford this place. But I'm just saying, I fucking love it. Still in disbelief, I slide my back down the door, holding a hand to my still rapidly pounding heart. Yeah, it's on the corgi pillow in the background, it is. I can't believe it. Is this all really happening? He- he's actually here. He's back. I- Please, if this is just another dream, don't let me wake up. Not yet. And I love this giant alligator pillow on the floor, which you can't see because the box, text box is always covering it. Singing in the shower! The sound of running bath water and steam fills my small bathroom. My thoughts retrace the events of the past few hours, finally processing the current situation. To think of all the years that have passed since we last saw each other. Somehow this really does feel more and more like a dream with each passing second. And yet, here I am, hoping I won't wake up from it all. <sighs> I turn off the shower and grab a towel, still lost in thought. Notice our sprite changed into our towel clothes. Just want you to notice that. That's that's what I'm talking about with the small details. Like, I know in some other games, like, 
our boy sprites, like our boyfriends, have like I can think someone had like two, maybe three little outfits. There's so much more, I feel like. Florian's route had so many, I swear to God. That man's got more outfits than I do in real life. Not quite, but close. But she has like quite a few. Like she's got her little bathing thing. She's got a sleepy thing. Like she's, and I love it. Like it's so cute because it's not like the game isn't like, oh, I'm taking a shower and they show her normally. They show her in like a little bathing spray. And I just, again, I know some games do some things like that, but I just feel like in this one, there's just extra there's just more it's not like one or two little it's so much more and like sometimes and i'll point them out when we get there sometimes the little changes are like you're like that look right there that what the hell that's above and beyond like it's it's impressive what i'm saying anyway as i began to put on my pajamas i look in the mirror and see the reflection of a small pink penguin staring back at me he <laughs> <laughs> oh. Our shock face is great. Curiously, I slowly approach the small creature and pick it up. Could I still be drunk? No, I think you're pretty sober by now. Did you just talk? Yep. Ah! Ah! I immediately throw the creature as I scream and pull my towel closer. By the way, that screaming match that we just had, that happens in every single path, and it's amazing, and I love it. I don't get tired of it. H who are you? What are you doing in my bathroom? What are you? I, I, I can explain. Just please put the shampoo bottle down. I, I mean no harm. Why are you talking? Are you a penguin? Penguins don't talk. Uh, uh, my name is Philia. I'm a messenger of love. You, you summoned me. Sh should I call the cops or animal control? It, neither. I'm no criminal nor wild beast, but please listen to what I have to say. D don't go closer, you hear me? Suddenly, as I'm pressed against my bathroom door, holding out a shampoo bottle defensively at the small creature, a loud bang resounds throughout my apartment as if my front door was kicked open. You know what's happening. Oh my god, am I getting double robbed at the same time? Why is this happening to me? I turn around to see that the mysterious pink penguin has now vanished into thin air. After a few moments, I can't help but jump as someone knocks loudly from the other side of the bathroom door. Hey, are you okay? I heard a terrible scream. I only think the whole apartment complex heard it. Enix? Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm fine. I was, it was just a, a penguin or something? I can't hear you. Are you hurt? I, I'm coming in, okay? No, wait. Don't you dare come in right now. My heart slams in my chest as I watch my bathroom's doorknob slowly begin to turn. No, wait! Don't come in! Just as I say those words, the door flings open to reveal a breathless Enix defensively holding a baseball bat. She does love baseball. Spacey, are you okay? I heard you screaming at someone. I thought someone broke in. You did. You were the one who broke in. Huh? Huh? Enix slowly looks down to see that I'm holding a mere towel over my half-naked body. The realization of the situation quickly settling in. Uh, oh, look, he's all embarrassed because he's like, God, she's hot. Yeah, you want you want me? Really? Let's go. Now. We're not going to get the tasty scenes for a long time. I didn't, I didn't get to that point, by the way. There are some tasty scenes. So. Enix? Y yeah? Get out! She's like, Enix? Yeah. Get the fuck out! <laughs> See, look at it! Oh. I love it. About half an hour later... Are you ever gonna let me explain? No? Shut up! Spacey, I've known you since I was in diapers. I've seen more than that over the years and you know it. We aren't kids, Enix! How could you just barge into someone's apartment holding a baseball bat like that? Are you crazy? Oh, gee. I'm sorry, but it's not like every day your drunk neighbor screams like she's getting murdered at three in the morning. <laughs> you jerk. D don't you dare laugh. You're the one already laughing. B because you look like a total idiot. <laughs> You should have seen your face holding that bat. 
you know, I was here genuinely concerned for your well-being. And next time you and your kitty-themed shower caps are on your own. After a few moments, Enix and I break out into hard laughter over the nonsensical situation. It takes a few moments to gather our wits about us as we just glance at the other and laugh harder. It's Sir Doggington, the wizard dog. That's why he's wearing the wizard hat. Just, just so you know. All of a sudden, it feels like we're kids again, and the weight of life is no longer so overbearing. See, if you're just listening in the background and you're not watching me, you don't know that I'm putting the little hat-mouse cursor on top of everything and just randomly saying that's why it doesn't make any sense sometimes. You're like, it's on what? Like, I'm going to put it on the light. And you're like, you're putting what on the light? I'm putting the hat on the light. So that's where the random things come from if you're just background listening. So you're missing the fun of seeing the little hat cursor on top of things. <gasps> we can put it on the chair. <laughs> Everything is much more fun when there's a little wizard hat on it. And I just want to make a bunch and just put them on everything in my house. Kind of like googly eyes. I really do want to be that person who has just the sticky on googly eyes and just randomly just sticks them on shit. It's like in the grocery store, stick them on a pair. Like, not that I leave my house anymore because, you know, but like, it'd just be kind of fun. Anyway, yeah, I'd get them and stick them all over. And here's my fridge has googly eyes on it. And then my couch has googly eyes. My bird has googly eyes. Bird already has eyes, but it's, I wouldn't do that. It would hurt him. He would probably pull on his little feathers, but he's like, the fuck? Stick googly eyes on your cage, so your cage sheds googly eyes. <laughs> Everything in my apartment would have googly eyes. That's how you know I've gone insane. I'm very close to that. I'm just like about a fraction of an inch away from that level of crazy. After it feels like five straight minutes of laughing and poking fun at the other, Enix speaks up, wiping away, forming tears at his eyes. Man, I don't think I've laughed that hard in years. You really haven't changed, you know that, Spacey? I missed you, dummy. There he goes again, saying things like that. No, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a grown woman, and I know these words don't mean what I want them to mean. But we're just old friends. That's why he can laugh so easily. Enix slowly makes his way to my front door before turning around one last time. Well, now that I know you're sober and not getting murdered, I'll get going. Good night, Spacey. Try to get some rest, okay? Y yeah, I'll do my best. You too. Uh, thank you for everything, Enix. Good night. As Enix exits through the door, I'm unable to swallow the words I desperately wanted to say, and my voice betrays me. And I... I missed you too, you, you dumb butt. Enix slightly stops and glances over his shoulder as he shoots me a smile I haven't seen in years... It's a blushing, charming, adorable smile. Man with a girlfriend. It's okay, she's a bitch. Just as quickly, he closes my front door, and I fight the immense urge to open it again. Quickly put it on the alligator before he fades out. There you go. Oh, no! No! We lost the hat because I was adjusting myself and my mouse slid. Oh, we lasted a whole chapter. Usually we don't get that far. This is going to be a thing. I was going to try and be like, let's see if we can keep the hat the whole time. It wasn't going to last. We made it halfway through this part. So now in episode two, we don't get to put the hat on things. My first love, episode two. Without the little magic hat. I'm so disappointed in myself. I sob into my school bag as the evening sun's rays flow into my classroom. Tears I can't manage to hold in any longer fall down my cheeks. Everyone had finally gone home for the day, and I felt I had a secret place to let out my emotions, even if just for a little bit. Now we just have to put the mouse pointer along straight lines. You know, or like, the other edge has to go on angled things if it fits, but we gotta like, line it up. You don't know that I secretly do that, like if I'm reading and I see something behind, like my mouse is always... Like I try to line it up on things. <laughs> like if these, like, panels have like, decorative lines i'm always like putting it against the lines i don't know why i have a weird habit of doing that sometimes but i do anyway suddenly i look up when i hear the classroom door swing open to reveal a breathless and disheveled enix it doesn't stay there for very long but i still like to do it like now that left side is aligned and then that bottom right side is aligned it's like perfect e enix spacey <sighs> there you are okay I've already seen this, so I'm not going to gush. Because I forgot to gush, but... Look at his little 
little ponytail. Okay, I'm going to gush a little bit. Like, look at his cute little ponytail. I love it. It's adorable. I love I like our little, cute little Bob, too, with our little braid and everything. But his little ponytail is so sweet. I love it. <laughs> I love ponytail Enix. Okay, there you go. You just don't get that initial, like, ah, reaction because I've seen it before. But it's still cute. Anyway, what, what are you doing here? How, how did you know where I was? You idiot. Do you know how worried I was? He's very aggressive with us about things. Enix forcefully pulls me up out of my seat and embraces me tightly, not even giving me a chance to speak. He's aggressively protective. I saw you in the courtyard running away, bawling your eyes out when I was heading to practice. I nearly had a heart attack. What's wrong with you? Did someone... No, it's just... It's my parents again. I just got off the phone with my mom. Like... Not he sees us crying and like, oh god, no, I gotta go check on my friend and make sure everything's okay, but like, oh my god, who hurt you? I'm gonna need you to calm the fuck down, Captain Angst. Jesus. Wow. Enoch, they've been fighting so much lately, I, I think they really might get a divorce soon. Uh, I'm scared, Enix. I d don't know what to do. Seems they fight even more when I'm home. I, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go back there. Then don't. Come to my house instead. At least until your parents can work out a solution. W what? I'm serious. If you don't feel comfortable at your house, you shouldn't have to be there. I'll talk to my mom. One of my brothers just moved out, so we have a room that... Enix, it's... It's impossible. There's no way. Spacey, look at me. Nothing is impossible. I know it might feel like you're all alone right now. But you're not. You've never been. I'm right here. No matter... Like this, right? No matter what happens. This was what I was talking about when I said, like, certain words. What? What is a big word to forget? <laughs> this is not a uh, or the... What? I kind of feel like that's not something that you should normally forget. Um, That's my nitpick. When it's like, uh, or there's a plural missing or whatever. Like... Things like that, like I get it, you're typing really fast, you don't realize you didn't hit A, or you hit an S by accident, or didn't pluralize it, but what? <laughs> I've never seen it. What missing? It just struck me as odd. That's it. So, there you go. That's it. That is my only, like, criticism. Is just... when Because if you write it yourself, you read, you know what it says. But when someone else reads it, they're like, no matter happen wait, what? No matter what happens, I'll always be here for you. I promise. So it's just, I mean, that's that's it. That was the biggest thing that I noticed. I mean, small things like that here and there, but that was the biggest one that when I noticed it, I was like, What? We missed what? <laughs> just it's kind of funny, actually, but it's not like game breaking or anything like that. It's just that's my that's it's the teeny tiniest, most minor thing that could be off in a game. And like, for everything else that's gone into this, the art and everything, I'd gladly take the good story that we have, the great backgrounds, the amazing artwork, and just the other amazing little details, and have some typos. All I'm saying. So, that's it. I mean, that's still, that's fucking phenomenal. So anyway, I do find it amusing though. With that, that case in point, I was like, what is happening? Anyway, I won't let you go through this alone. So don't keep your feelings bottled up inside. Not for me. If you need to cry, then cry. I'll be right here and I'm not going anywhere. I wonder if you always had a crush on, I'm starting to wonder if you always had a crush on us. Just like we, beep, 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 beep. Anyway, had a crush on him. You know what I mean? Oh, this is like, this. Must, I think this is Miss Moon. And like, a, <laughs> Because some of this stuff does change. This is different in his. There's some different stuff in Jamie's route. I don't recall if the background, these weren't there. These weren't there. They were different in Jamie's. And I don't actually remember in... Florian and Marcella's route, I think they were the same, but I'm not sure. I can't quite recall. But anyway, I extend out a hand from under my covers as I silence my alarm clock. 
slowly I turn around to face my ceiling like Miss Moon would look so cute with the hat on and our radio because it looks like it's got a cute little face would have a hat. <sighs> just, I mean, we'll have other chances to put the hat on it, but I'm just disappointed, man. Somehow, I feel like I didn't sleep a wink. See, and this is our PJ costume. I love it. The rumble of lightning in the distance catches my attention as I peek through, out the, uh, peek through the curtains. Peek out through the curtains. Wow, that's just me not being able to read. Also, the fact that it's raining so you can see the rain on the window. Little details. Dark skies approach in the horizon. Seems like it's going to be stormy today. And maybe other games like do this and I just don't notice because I'm not usually paying attention to the background. I don't know why I'm paying attention so much to them. As I get out of bed and flick on the lights, I can't help but look over at my bathroom door and scratch my head. Yesterday doesn't even feel like it was real at all. Did I just imagine all of it? Oh! You're finally awake! Good morning, Master! Glancing down, I see the small pink penguin from yesterday peeking in through my bedroom door, looking as real as ever. Oh no, there it is again. That weird penguin hallucination. I must have ordered some strong stuff at the bar yesterday. Sheesh. Why, how rude! My name is Philia, and as I've mentioned before, I'm a messenger of love, not a hallucination. A messenger of what? And more importantly, are you are you eating my cheese? The small penguin slightly moves aside to reveal a mountain of crumbs behind her, along with crumpled labels of different cheeses I seem to remember buying during my last trip to the market. Cheese? Ah! Is that what this delectable thing is called? It's so delicious! Cheese really is, so I get feel Philia there. A pink talking penguin that loves cheese. Yep, I'd be worried if I wasn't hallucinating. Maybe it's time to schedule my doctor's appointment. For, for the last time, I'm not a hallucination! I am a magical being sent to help you! You summoned me when you wrote in the love spell! Do you at least remember that? The love spell? Yes, yeah, surely you must remember that! You know, the pink book that my master gave you yesterday in exchange for saving her life? It's like this big, kind of shiny. Wait, are you talking about that old lady's notebook? Old lady! How dare you, human! Listen up! Even if you are my current master, I won't allow you to insult my real master like that! She's the most powerful witch in the world, I'll have you know! Did you say witch? Yes, now do you remember? She handed you a pink notebook and a really adorable looking pen. This happens in every route too, and I fucking love it. I don't get tired of it, it's hilarious. That pen was, you know, actually me in my other form. <laughs> get it? Because I'm a pen queen. But I'm Literally says the pen queen line in the badumtis in every one. And I fucking love it. <laughs> it never gets old. It's just as amusing every time. I was always like... <laughs> yep, I get it. Now give me a second while I call my therapist and then the zoo, okay? Well, why are you so mean? Why would you believe me? I'm telling the truth. Uh, okay, okay, don't cry. I'll uh, pretend that I believe you. Yeah? I'll pretend I'm not going completely insane just for a little bit. So don't cry. So, um, then if that old lady was a witch, and you're a magical talking pen, then the notebook she gave me must have also been, uh, magical? right -o! It was a magical spell book. It has the power to make anyone whose name you write in it fall madly in love with you. Uh-huh. And something tells me you're telling the truth, right? Of course! Do you not remember whose name you wrote in it either? I'm... I'm flabbergasted! And by any chance, do you happen to know whose name I supposedly wrote in this magic notebook? Of course! You wrote the name of Enix Cray! He's the boy whose name you were calling out earlier in your sleep, too! <laughs> what kind of dreams were you having, huh? Yep! I'm going back to sleep! I'll just reject everything and then she'll go away. Yep, everything's fine. 
This is fine. Flames all around. Everything's fine. This is fine. That's been my mantra for a while. We know. We know why. I don't need to. This is fine. <laughs> you really don't remember, huh? What a forgetful human you are. Hmm. What to do? What to do? I told you I don't remember any of the... Wait... A cold shiver runs down my spine as my foggy memory begins to become clearer. Memories of last night begin swarming back to me. I open the notebook only to stare into blank pages. Uh, what am I reading? I don't get a word of this. Is it about sewing? I don't understand anything. Hmm... But it said to write someone's name in. Maybe it's like a hex book. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, that's it. In that case, this one's for breaking my heart, Enix. You idiot. It's funny, though, that if she thought it was a hex book, she didn't write Isla's name in there, but that would have been fucked up. I don't want Isla falling in love with me. I'm sorry. Look. We'll get to a girl in a later route that I'm like, you know, if she had a route, like... I don't really want to go down the lesbian route, but, like, she's cute and I like her. So, like, fine. But I No, I don't want her. No. 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 Ugh. Not Isla. Fuck that shit. No, get out of here. Other girl on a different route. Okay, maybe. <laughs> she's fun and she's cute and she's adorable and you kind of want to date her, too. Okay, when we get there, you'll see. My jaw drops as I turn to slowly look at the pensive penguin waddling about deep in thought. The notebook, the pen, everything was as she said. This was no nightmare. This was far worse. This was real. F Philia, was it? I I think I remember. Oh, thank goodness. I was really running out of ideas here. I was scared you didn't remember reading the rules either. That would have been a disaster. No, actually, you're right. I know why I don't remember reading the rules. Or anything, for that matter. Philia, I... I was kind of, um... D drunk when I opened that book. I, I thought it was a hex book or something, not a love spell. Or whatever it is. Oh! Uh, you're n not mad, are you? No, I'm not mad. I'm furious! Do you have any idea what terrible disasters you could have caused by being so irresponsible? Aren't you supposed to be an adult? Consider my feathers ruffled. Wait, Philia, a love spell can't possibly work on Enix. He already has so many loves. Bzz, wrong, you fool. F fool? Mr. Enix is definitely in love with you right now. Besides, it's not completely rare to find a mortal that's in love with two or more different people at the same time. Yeah, but that doesn't make it right. Well, it's fine, because I can just break the spell, right? Psst, wrong again. You're an idiot. I idiot? The spell itself will naturally stop at the next full moon. It was, you know, written in the instructions. Not that you'd know, of course. <laughs> Crazy drunk lady. This is what my life has come to. Magic penguin sass. Magic penguin sass has to be my new favorite phrase, by the way. <sighs> I guess it could be worse, so I might as well explain. The spell is only designed to let you experience the temporary passions of love with the person whose name you wrote in it. So in a few weeks from now, Mr. Enix will forget all that's happened since the day you wrote inside the book. See? Nothing to worry about. Philia, it's not that simple. I can't take this lightly. Enix is a very special person to me. Besides, he, um, he's already in a relationship with someone else. I can't mess around with someone like him, even if it's only for a month or whatever. Good girl. I'll just, I'll do my best to stay away from him until the month is over. Yes, it's for the best. Oops. Huh? What do you mean, oops? Suddenly, my doorbell, doorbell chime rings. This is amazing. This is funny. That's why I love Philia, by the way. In case you didn't already love her. She's great. I 
peeked out through my door hole to see Enix standing there patiently. Without a second thought, I quickly opened the door. I'll just avoid him! Whips open the door. Hi, what? Nothing? Hey, morning. How are you feeling? Enix, I, uh, I'm feeling uh, great. Is, um, is everything okay? Uh, well, yeah, everything's fine, I guess. I, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for the heartfelt, uh, message you sent me this morning. It was, um, touching? H heartfelt message? Yeah, you know, the one written on top of the penguin-shaped pizza you ordered me? <laughs> penguin-shaped pizza. <laughs> it's still funny. I know I've already read this part, but it's still fucking hilarious. It's a penguin-shaped fucking pizza. Of course. I shouldn't be surprised. I am. That little detail is just fucking great. Oh my god. Gotta say, you have uh, quite a way with words written with pepperonis. <laughs> I don't know what it said. Penguin shape, do you say? Yep. I've never been sent a pizza that looks like a penguin before, so really, I'm flattered. Kind of crazy how they got the beak so detailed. Oh, but the pizza guy accidentally left two boxes. So I was wondering if you wanted to share. Uh, can I come over or... Sh sure, let me just uh, clean up a bit in here. Uh, just a sec. You got it. I'll go get the pizzas and some paper plates from my place. I quickly closed the door as I turned on my heel towards my bedroom. Philia! <laughs> Penguin shit. With a heartfelt message written in pepperoni. <laughs> I want to know what she fucking wrote. After stuffing our faces with cheese-loaded pizza, also with pepperoni, Ina Hicks and I sat comfortably in my room as we glanced over at our empty plates. I'm not gonna lie, that was some pretty good pizza, even if it did look like a weird penguin. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Make yourself, dummy. You ordered it, right? Oh, right. Oh, um, clean up these plates real quick. Be right back. I grab the empty plates from my bed and carry them to the kitchen. It's kind of weird because we have a whole apartment while we're sitting in our bedroom eating pizza. I'd... On the way there, I see that dark clouds have almost completely blocked out the sun. As a low rumble of thunder echoes throughout the sky, I can't help but wince. Like, when people come over to my house and we're going to eat, we eat in the living room. Because, I like, I got a kitchen, but we don't have a place to sit. I don't, my dining room is my you know, reading chair. And now my work office. Um, so I don't really have a get- We sit on the couch, but we don't go- Let's go sit in my bedroom. And eat. That's fucking weird. Who does that? It's the only, like- It's kind of weird. But then he wouldn't be able to play with my kitty- My- She's a bunny. She's a bunny. I shuffle back to my room to see Enix staring intently at my collection of my favorite childhood magical girl character, Miss Moon. So like Sailor Moon? You still collect these? Um, yeah, sorry, I usually put them away when I bring guests over. That's awesome. Man, you really make me want to step up my collection game. Some of these are totally vintage. See, he's a child at heart. What? Do you mean that? Of course I mean that. She's your favorite, isn't she? And you always loved her growing up, too. You're the- f Oh, you're the first person to say that, you know? What do you mean? Everyone I've brought here from my university always teases me or laughs and say that collecting toys like that is so childish. And that I should act more like an adult. Even my parents have told me to grow up and sell them. You're the first person to say otherwise. You don't sell your favorite things, okay? I still have all my Shira dolls from when I was a kid. They are, like, broken. The heads don't go on. Like, they're in shambles. They are literally, like, I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of trash. I won't get rid of them, because they were my favorite fucking toys, and you can tell by how trash they are. Like, you couldn't sell them if you wanted to, but I would never get rid of them because they were my favorites. Along with all my My Little Ponies. Every single fucking one of them. Like, I kept a apart some of my Barbies, like some of my more favorite things, and let my nieces play with the other ones, you know? But my ponies were always in a bin around a corner hidden. Nobody touches those. And my mom even knew. Nobody touches those. Oh my god, she'll freak out. Yeah, don't touch them! Like, no, do not touch my My Little Ponies. 
I would still take that shit out and play with them now. I'm not even kidding. I've gone through the bin because I brought it's in my apartment now. It's in my bedroom actually. There's like a sheet over it. I have no place. To, I'm not gonna store it outside. They could get ruined. Those are my my little ponies. <laughs> And now I have all my anime collectibles? Like, fuck you if you think I'm not gonna keep all my shit. My freaking I have a couple My Little Ponies out, actually. Around. I have, like, my couple favorite ones and my one that I won. It's my lucky pony. Only thing I ever won as a child. It was a My Little Pony drawing contest for My Little Pony the movie, so, like... My mom actually... Okay, it's, it's a cheat, because my mom drew it. My mom drew the pony and I colored it in very, 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 very carefully. And I won the, I won a pony and I won like a fucking movie poster. I think that was it. I don't know if there was anything else in there, but I still have that pony. She's on one of my shelves. Like, bitch, I remember. I think her name is Moonstone. Like, just saying, like, oh my fucking my little pony. It's like a talk. <laughs> my little ponies and my Shira dolls. Some of my Barbies. Like, most, those got mostly like, like, I still don't, I don't have a most, a lot of them. I still have some of the clothes and stuff and, like, ones that I got later. But not, like, my early, early childhood, like, super vintage ones. I don't, unfortunately don't have those, but anyway. I think that's why I was so surprised when I saw your box yesterday with all of our old toys inside. Sometimes you keep your favorite toys, okay? It's okay. Why would I say anything otherwise? I know how much happiness she always brought you as a kid. I think it's safe to assume she still holds a, spa a special place for you, right? I look up into I look up to lock eyes with Enix, holding an earnest, honest gaze. <sighs> so what if they're kids' toys? Should we really let the opinions of others dictate what we can or can't find happiness in? It's ridiculous. But once we pass a certain age, we just have to stop liking the things that make us happy because it doesn't conform to views other people have. Right? Like, I'm totally okay being an old lady playing Atome games and being like, oh my little cartoon boyfriends! And having my eat-a-bags even though I'm not, like, 20. Fuck you, I'll do whatever I want. I don't care if people think I'm juvenile or weird. I'm happy! That's when my HD crashes. And then I lose all my shit. <sighs> and then I curl up in a ball and I want to cry. I'm like, you can't, like, talk to most people about that. Like, I just can't handle that. I lost all my game recordings. And everyone's like, so? Just do them over. Ah, ah, I don't understand. It's like someone broke up with me or died. Ah. I'm like, most people wouldn't get it. They'd be like, oh, grow up. You shut up. It hurts, man. It hurts. And here we are doing this again. Anyway. Does happiness have to have an expiration date or something? Apparently. Yes, when you're dead. You're right. You're completely right. Thank you, Enix. He's a smart man. He's cute. Smart. Enix shoots me a small smile as he ruffles my hair. And you're the, you're the one who taught me that, dummy. And don't go around hiding the things you really love just because you're scared of what others might think of them. Who cares what they think anyways? Just be yourself. I feel like you might need to learn that because you're going to be a doctor and that seems surprising to us and you're dating Isla and I'm just saying you're giving us this take your own advice suddenly a screeching light a uh, lightning strike claps down right outside my apartment can't help but scream as the power in the room goes out and everything turns pitch black that screaming lightning and thunder and shit going on was pretty fucking amazing sound effects by the way hey watch out I'm in your way whoa Thud. I love the sexy jazz music right now. It's great. A few seconds later, the power turns back on. My eyes widen as I realize my face is inches apart from Enix's. That's why it's sexy jazz music time. Not only that, but given our current position, I'm basically straddling him on top of my bed. What should I do? Okay, wait. So what did I say the first time I recorded this? And what do I say every time? What should I do? Kiss him, goddammit! That option never comes up. It was funnier the first time I recorded this because I was like, kiss him! And I clicked it and lean in for a kiss is there and I laughed my ass off. Because I was like, that is never there! <laughs> and I am all talk because I was like, totally kiss him! And then you get that option and I'm like... Do that. Although, the first time I asked if he was okay, I wonder what... Look, here's the thing about this game. It's technically the illusion of choice. Only the last choice 
I'm telling you this, but you already know because you've played this game, right? You were good doobies and you went and played the game before you watched this, but in the off chance one of you is bad and needs to go sit in the fucking corner, put a shame face on, put your shame hat on and go sit in the corner in case you're watching this and you haven't played the game yet. Okay, that's you. You know who you are. Um, I'll talk to you as if you don't know already. But like only the last choice matters. So, and I didn't realize, I wasn't 100% sure about that until we, in my first route, when my first playthrough and I got through and I was like, oh. And it really lends itself well to the bet doing the bad ending first because then you get that nice little loop around that brings you to the good ending. You'll see when we get there. Oh, you already know. You know because your good doobies pats you all on the head gently. Good, good space muffins playing this game first before you come here and supporting these great developers. Good job ruffles your hair too okay and if you haven't and you were in the shame corner stop watching and go play the game okay the grandma spacey whips you anyway um so the first time i did this i did not lean in for a kiss and since this doesn't actually matter i kind of want to lean in for a kiss and see what happens because like what the fuck why not go let's go balls out let's do it he, he's so close his lips are right there maybe i should Spacey, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, she's not actually going to kiss him. Because that would make it awkward and then it would never be brought up again. Because again, it's technically the illusion of choice. It's just those few, it's just a few sentence things that change. So it was worth doing. Just first, she's like, I should, I should just kiss him. And he's like, are you all right? <laughs> her face. I love her fucking shock Pikachu face. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, I, I'm so sorry. I was possessed or something. Ah, please don't mind me. Weirdo. He's so cute up close when he's blushing. Later that evening. I like the happy circusy kind of music. I just... I feel like this is like Philly as jam. Like this just remind. I just feel her like do 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 waddling around in the kitchen in the background, kind of dancing. I just picture this. Anyway, I briskly pace around my room, still trying to process the events from earlier. I slap my cheeks and stare at my red-faced expression in a nearby mirror. Oh my god! I still can't believe I did that. His face, my face, close. Ugh! Stop thinking about it already, you idiot! Wow, Master's got it bad. You must really like Mr. Enix, huh? You'll get flustered very easily around him. And you! Where have you been? Don't go around sending weird notes on pizza to people in my name. S sorry, Master. I was only trying out. I can't help but sigh loudly as I stop to sit on my sofa. I swallow a forming lump in my throat as I look towards the small penguin. Philia, look, maybe I wasn't clear enough earlier, but I don't think I can do this. Well, she sent it before you said this, so... It, Enix is someone that I cared for very... Enix is someone that I cared for very deeply about. Okay, see, that's another weird sentence, but... Anyway. Someone that I cared for very deeply, or that I cared very deeply about. It's like we thought we changed the sentence. <laughs> and for a very... Very long time. He's someone extremely special to, to me, but him and I aren't meant to be together. Yes, you are. I accepted that fact a long time ago, Ooh, but you accepted wrong. I'm happy that the spell is, at the very least, allowing us to make up on some missed out time, but I... I can't seem to shake the feeling I'm doing something terrible. I mean, you kind of are, because you're kind of cheating with the guy that has a girlfriend, and he's going to cheat on his girlfriend with you. But, like, you know, she's a bitch, so on one hand, we're kind of an asshole for doing this. But on the other hand, she's an asshole, so it doesn't make us any less of one. No, maybe a justifiable one, or it's, that's how we feel better about ourselves. But, hmm. Billy thinks Master is looking at this the wrong way. What do you mean? It's because Master cares for Mr. Enix so much that she should take advantage of the situation. That way, Master can be grateful she was finally able to experience spending time with Mr. Enix by the next full moon 
and move on with their feelings. Yeah, have sex with a guy that's in a relationship. Sure, sounds great. Move on with my feelings? Yes, even though Master says these feelings are from past times, it's clear to Philia that Master's feelings are still very much real in the present, too. Therefore, if Master truly wants to move on, she should accept the spell, not reject it, and spend as much time with Mr. Enix as her heart wants. Because right now, Philly is sure Mr. Enix wants to spend time with you, too. Let's just stay out of bed with him, though, okay? I don't know how this one's gonna go, because I didn't get to that scene, but I'm just saying. Hmm? But that's just because of a silly spell. Well, spell or no spell, it doesn't make Mr. Enix's or Master's feelings any less, right? You know, I can't believe I'm getting life coached by a talking, cheese-eating, odd-colored penguin right now. Excuse me! Wisdom comes in all shapes, colors, and sizes, Master. You should not discriminate. <laughs> I think I understand what you're saying, Philia. If I'm honest, my heart jumped when you said he wanted to spend time with me. I think maybe I'll give this a shot. At least for a month, I'll just enjoy the moments with him that may come. Maybe it'll even give me enough to sort out my, my own feelings, too. Give me enough time to sort out my own feelings, too. I read that wrong. If I'm completely honest... Spending time with him again is all I could ever want anyways. Delia thinks Master is very adorable when she's not threatening to call law enforcement on her. <laughs> Thank you, Philia. I'm kind of glad I have you around. Philia is happy to be of service. Please compensate her life coaching by buying more cheese. We ran out. You ate all of my cheese already? Philia, I went grocery shopping just this week! Whee! Come back here, you little cheese devouring gremlin! A comical banter continues throughout my apartment, but in my heart, Philia's words echo over and over. Do, 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 do. Oh no, not yet, okay. Later that night, as the sound of the rain fills my apartment, I stare blankly into my dark ceiling. Sleep evades me. You know, Philly's right. I mean, it's not every day you save an all-powerful witch and get a mystical spellbook handed to you. I should reap the benefits of being a good civilian. What's the worst that could happen, right? Oh god, that's gonna go bad. Besides, I already lived through it once, after all. 1.47 a.m., by the way. A message. At this hour, I like that our little phone charm is Philia. I wasn't gonna point that out when it first popped up in the prologue, but I was gonna wait till later, but there you go. Hey, you up? Yeah, is everything okay? It's pretty late. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I didn't even notice the time. I was up binging this new anime series I found. Mm -hmm. Face. Which, by the way, is totally badass. It's called Slayer Demon. You gotta see it. I'm sending you the link tomorrow. Pfft, of course that's what he's up doing at this hour. I love him for that. Because that would be me at 2 o'clock in the morning on a weekend. Like, watch an anime! Also, I have a few friends. I have a few friends abroad that I've studied with flying into town for the weekend. We all wanted to hang out tomorrow and stuff. Want to come? Smiley face. Uh, he also uses emojis. Sure, sounds like fun. Awesome. See you tomorrow. And go to sleep, nerd. I was sleeping. You're the nerd watching anime at two in the morning, nerd. <laughs> True. Good night, Spacey. Sweet dreams. A small laugh escapes me as I read over our messages. I can't help but smile to myself as I close my eyes, holding my phone to my chest. A warm, nostalgic sensation nestles itself into my heart. Alright, so now we're going to wrap this part up and we will start in episode 3 and do... So yeah, we're still getting in the 2. They're slightly fitting better into an hour because I'm not rambling as much but still rambling because that's what i do anyway um but yeah we'll do episodes three and four in the next part so i will see you guys next time remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more